Hey guys, this is Cory, and today I want to show you one of my favorite 3D design software programs. It is called Tinkercad. Tinkercad is a free online solid modeling program, and it is a really good introduction to the world of 3D modeling. So if you have always wanted to 3D print or do machining, it is a great software program to use that's free of charge to kind of get your ideas out there um, to see what it would be like to actually manufacture them later on. It is also just a good thing for prototyping. So even if you never had the intent to actually physically make your object, it is just a great resource to use to get an idea of what 3D modeling software is like. This can also be used for doing designs for laser cutting too, so it's very useful. So if it is your first time going to Tinkercad, I will have you go to your URL bar and type in Tinkercad. Uh, you can see, hopefully see it up here on my screen. Um, and then if it's, you don't have an account, you'll hit join now. Um, I do have an existing account, so I'll hit sign in. Just a heads up, um, Tinkercad is free and it will have you use your email address and birthday to create an account. Um, if you are working with someone who is under the age of 17, um, a parent or guardian will need to verify their account. So just a heads up for that to be ready to verify an account if you have a child with you. So I'm going to go to sign in, and I already have an existing Autodesk account, so I will use this. Once you sign into Tinkercad, it will take you to the home screen. Um, if it is your first time signing in, it might bring you to a welcome screen. Um, definitely follow through the steps on that. It'll kind of give you a nice introduction of what to expect from Tinkercad. Um, and that's kind of what we'll go over today. It'll just be a quick video on basic tools you would need to get started on how to create a 3D model. So on my home screen, you can see I have my existing designs. And the, that's one of my favorite things about Tinkercad is even if you are in the middle of a design and your computer crashes, it will automatically save your design as you are creating it. So you can just open your Tinkercad account up on another computer um, and have your design as you had last or as it had last saved automatically. Um, and you can edit and recall your designs at any point in time from any computer on Tinkercad once you're logged in. So that's one of my favorite features. So for today, to create a new design, we will go to the Create New Design button. And I'll kind of talk you through the basic tools of, and what you're going to be seeing here today. So this first, the, th the first thing you're probably going to notice is this giant blue square in the middle of the screen. This is called the work plane. And for those of you who are 3D printing or are wanting to 3D print later on, think of this as the 3D printer's bed, um, the area where the 3D printer would actually manufacture your object onto. This is the space we're going to be using to design and draw our object. Now, you'll notice earlier I said this is called a solid modeling program. Solid modeling programs are a little bit different than your traditional modeling or drawing programs, as in, instead of freeform drawing your design, you will be using these shapes provided by the program to draw your object. So it's called solid modeling because think of these, all these shapes on the right hand side in the toolbar as solid shapes, meaning if we were to 3D print them as is, they would show up looking exactly like this. They are solid physical shapes that would show up in the real world. And the basics of this program is you will use these shapes and manipulate them and combine them um, and resize them to create the design you had in mind. So if you were wanting to design an airplane, you would break an airplane down into the shapes you see here, meaning we would use a cylinder for the airplane's body and we would either use this roof shape or this round roof shape and stretch it out to make the wings and thin it out until we had a shape that looked like what we wanted. And especially with that airplane design, we could use a cone for the nose and things like that. So you will use the uh, provided shapes to make the object you initially had in mind. Um, but before we attack these, we're going to talk about these controls on the left hand side because these are very important. Um, in most 3D design programs, you will see something like this. Um, this is called a view cube, and this will help you rotate around the 3D workspace to get a better view of your object. Um, so this is the default view. If you click, left click and hold and rotate around, this will allow you to rotate around the workspace. Um, this is honestly one of the biggest headaches with people getting started for 3D designing, in my opinion, is they are not used to having to rotate around their object to get a full view of it. Most of us are used to drawing with uh, like a top-down view where we would sketch, say, a cat or a dog or whatever we were drawing, and we would be able to see that as it was going to be a finished product. We would be able to see it from all the angles that it was going to be framed up in. Um, but with 3D designing, it's a little different. Say if you were drawing, I don't know, a lock and key set. If you were drawing the lock up here and it 
you, you had the key back here, you would need to rotate around to make sure that the key was the right spacing away or was the right size or that everything was lined up how you thought it was. So as you're designing your object, I definitely advise you to use this left click and hold to rotate around your object every once in a while to make sure everything looks okay. You can also just click on one of the faces instead of dragging it around, or you can use these arrows to, to get to the face you want. You'll see we can get a view from below the work plane. The other thing you'll notice too is on these set of controls, there is a house. Say if you are working and you get this really weird view, like you're stuck over here and you don't know how to get back to the default view, that's what this house button is for. If you click it, it'll bring you back to the default Tinkercad view. This won't help us too much um, because we don't have anything on our work plane, but this is the fit in all in view option. Say if you were working with a bunch of tiny objects and they were spread all over here to the four corners of the work plane, you could click this fit all in view button and it would make sure that everything that you had out and were working on was visible. This is very, very helpful if you're working on something very complex that has a lot of tiny pieces that are scattered everywhere. Next, you will see a plus sign. This is just a classic zoom in. And then, of course, the minus is the zoom out feature. You can just click these as needed to zoom in or zoom away from your object. And this last feature is something that you won't use too often. At least I don't. Um, it is what's called an orthographic view or a flat view. If you click on it, it will do exactly that. It will just give you a very flat view of your object. And you notice when you rotate the work plane, it looks very, very different. Um, this is not as useful, in my opinion, for people getting started. Um, I would stay on that initial view. Um, that is called a perspective view. The perspective view gives you much more depth and shadow to kind of, it gives you that more realistic three-dimensional view. Um, although the orthographic view is very good if you need to have, say if you are were working on something like that was going to be assembled like an origami piece later on. If you were working with all these flat shapes that would be assembled into a full 3D shape, or if you were trying to do writing on a curved surface, um, the, that flat or orthographic view can give you a better perspective for doing things like that, but we will not be using that today. So for my first example, this is always what I like to kind of get people started off with. Again, we really won't be working on an actual project, but just an example is we will use the idea, say, if you needed to make a gift box. So first you would identify what you wanted, what shape you wanted your gift box to be, because you could feasibly make it any one of these shapes. I am going to make mine more traditional. I'm going to use just the regular box shape. So we're going to drag out that box and we will resize it as needed. So you're kind of overwhelmed at first. Once you drag a shape out, and this is true for any shape you use. So again, you just left click and drag, or you can just click and drag shapes out as needed. So when you initially, whatever object you have selected or you drag out, will have all these white squares on it. These are to resize your object. If you hover over it and then left click and drag it out, It'll resize your object in that direction you're dragging it out on. Um, you will notice that you have numbers once you start dragging it out. These are the length and width of your object in millimeters. So if you are wanting to make this bigger or smaller, you can drag out one of these. Or if you see these boxes with numbers in it, you can actually just click in there if you know there's specific dimensions you would like to work with. So like say if we want to make ours 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters. And again, Tinkercad will default to use millimeters. Um, if you are someone who is not comfortable with millimeters, you can change the units. I'm going to minimize this menu real fast so you can get a better view. If you come down here to where it says edit grid in the bottom right corner and you left click, it'll let you change the units. Um, we have millimeters, inches, and then something called bricks. Bricks is actually if you were going to be designing Lego bricks. We will not use that today, but it is a really fun feature. So if you have someone who's a Lego fan, definitely play around with that. We do have inches if you'd like. I'm going to keep mine in millimeters, um, and I would definitely advise if you are going to be 3D printing your object to keep it in millimeters too. Um, most 3D printing softwares, like their slicing software and printer control software, are going to be using millimeters, so it's just easier to keep it all consistent, but please feel free to use inches if that's what you're comfortable with. So these white tabs, if we grab them at any corner, um, it will resize them as needed. Again, if you scoot your cursor away from it while holding down that tab, it'll make it larger. If you scoot it inwards on the object, it'll make it smaller. And you can also just type in the number you would like your object to be if you have specific dimensions in mind. Now you'll notice so far, just by grabbing these corner tabs, it only resized what I would consider the length and width of the object. If you are wanting to make your object thicker or thinner, you do that by grabbing this white square at the top of your object. Um, if you get a top view, you'll clearly see it's right in the middle. Sometimes from that perspective view, it is a little difficult to see where it's actually at. So that, Q, or that square right in the center, if you click and drag it, 
it'll make your object thicker or thinner. And just like before, you can type in a number too. So I'll make mine 50 millimeters. So, and if you are confused on how big your object is, say if you step away from it for a bit, start working on other shapes over here, you can select your object just by clicking on it and hovering over those cubes and it will, or the squares, and it will give you those dimensions. So again, if we're like, I don't remember how long it is or how wide it is, you can just hover over it and it will give you those dimensions. Another thing you will notice once you have your object selected is there is a black cone at the top of your object. This is for rate. If you click on it and drag it up or down, it will raise or lower your object off the work plane. So you'll notice if we keep dragging it up and if we get a front view so you can actually see it, you'll notice we have a bunch of space under our object. And then if we get a different view. If you drag it down, you'll notice it'll bring it below the work plane. So this is helpful if you are trying to build things, say like, I don't know, a staircase, and you need to have, of course, your first stair on the bottom floor, but then you want to kind of have it elevated from there on out. You can just drag these up or down as necessary. Just like before, too, when we drag this up, we'll see to the bottom right there is a number. This number over here is associated with how tall or, or how, much how much taller or how much lower it is off that work plane. So a positive number means it is lifted up off the work plane, and a negative number means it is below the work plane. Sometimes it's hard to tell, but if you get a front view, you can clearly see it. Um, sometimes this part can confuse people a little bit. When you drag it up, you'll notice two numbers. This number on the bottom right is associated with how close or far away it is to the work plane. This top number is associated with how far it has moved from its last movement. So say right now we're at negative 10. If we bring it up to zero, it'll say that we've displaced it or moved it 10 millimeters, and this number will say if it's actually sitting on the work plane or above or below it. So zero means it's right on the work plane, negative means it's below, positive means it's above. Sometimes that can be a little confusing to people. Um, what I advise sometimes is if this top number is confusing you, just don't even pay attention to it. Definitely pay attention to this bottom number. That'll actually tell you how close it is or how far away it is. So one other feature too that's really interesting about this program, so say if we needed to cut a circle or a hole out of this object in the middle, um, we can do that. Um, you can either combine shapes, so if you use sh drag shapes over using your cursor or your arrow keys, whichever is your preference. If we wanted to add a cylinder right here, if you were trying to make a factory building, you could drag this, resize it just like we did before. And then if you wanted to say, I want this to be grouped together, I want this to be one object, if you left click and window select both objects, you will get an option called group. Um, it's in this top right corner, and this will combine the two shapes together to make them one object. Now, that's great if you want to add shapes together, but say, like I was saying before, if we wanted to cut a hole in the middle of this object, um, I'm going to undo this, that's what this button is right in the middle. Say if I wanted to place this right in the center of my object. So there's two things we could do. You could either line it up, just kind of eyeballing it, or and just using your arrow keys to line it up. Or you could use this alignment tool. Again, if you left click, and window select, you will see this option that says align. And depending on what view you have, it'll allow you to either left align, center align or right align in two different dimensions. So what I would consider the X and Y direction or left and right and backwards and forwards. So we will say align it in the center in the X direction and align it in the center in the Y direction. And so now this is completely centered on our object. And if we want to cut this out, anytime you click on a shape or drag a shape out, you will get the option to either change its color, which is what this is talking about, or create a hole. And what a hole does is it creates a negative space for your object. So meaning if now we've got this aligned how we wanted to, if we do that window selection again, we can do that group button. And remember before when we grouped them together, we had that extra piece that was now stuck to the side. If you group a hole into a solid object, it will do just that. It'll create a hole. And you can do that with any shape. You'll see it gives you two default objects to uh, use as erasers or holes, but you can do any shape as a hole. You just drag it out. And where it's a solid, this will allow you to change the color if you need, or you can choose it to be a hole and use it to subtract or take away from an object. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is renaming your object. Tinkercad will default to give you a really silly name up at the top. If you just click on that, you can type in a new name and press enter and it will save it. So that is kind of the basics of Tinkercad I had for you guys today. Um, 
if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at the Makerspot email, info, I-N-F-O, at themakerspot.org. So info at themakerspot.org. I would be happy to answer your questions. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope this helped, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Mm-hmm.